These are the instructions for the Fortune Fish Gearbox Pet. So step one, here we have parts 16 and 15. Make sure you sand off any tabs that were connecting the parts to the boards. We don't want to leave any small tabs as these will cause binding in the moving mechanisms. And it says here in step one to sand and wax the edges. So these edges will be uh, sliding against our moving gear bore so you want to sand those a bit smoother don't sand them too much or you make it shorter than it needs to be and wax those edges also so that wax acts as a lubrication and helps the mechanisms to all move a bit more smoothly Wax makes a big difference, so make sure you use lots of wax. <clears throat> okay, now we can glue these together. So they will join like this. Let's put some glue in those slots. Push them together and clean away any excess glue. You don't want excess glue that might bind up the mechanism where it's not supposed to be glued. So I have a jar of water and a couple of brushes, a small brush and a larger brush. And um, using the water also helps to push the glue and let it wick into the cracks to make a better glue join as well and to clean away the excess so you don't bind up the mechanisms and wipe off any excess with a paper towel also. You don't want glue on this bottom edge because that will cause it to be glued to the wrong part of the base and then our mechanism won't turn. So now we can take the base, orient it so we've got the female puzzle shape on the left and I'll cross over to the left where the little dot is our winding handle also oriented to the left so this will be glued in position here just do a test fit and now we can take it out and glue it. So don't put any glue on the bottom edges because that will glue it to the underneath piece of wood. We only want to glue it to this moving gear. So put the glue on these outer edges, these little short edges in the corners. And on the shorter side you see this isn't symmetrical there's a short edge and a long edge we want it on the shorter edge
press that on. Do a little wiggle, make sure you're not getting glue on the bottom edge, that bottom board, and clean away our excess glue. You want to keep it nice and clean and free of glue around this piece so that our gear that goes on it can move freely. So now we're going to take that gear, so sand off any tabs. It's important not to have tabs on the gear, teeth or the bore. If there's tabs on the gear teeth then they won't move as smoothly and give that inner bore a bit of a sand that's going to be rubbing as it turns. I'm going to wax one face. This will be the downwards face that's going to be rubbing against this other gear. Wax the inside of the bore and wax the teeth as well. Right, so keeping track of which face you waxed, it's the top face. And we want to rotate that so that waxed face is now going to be down against this gear. And place it on such that the little dot on this piece is lined up with the dot on the outside gear teeth. So the winders to the left, the dots are together, and the axle of this gear is to the left. The orientation is important. Okay, now find this part, and that's going to get sanded, free of any tabs as usual. And push that down with no glue. Free it up every now and then to check that no glue is binding it where it shouldn't be. But always return it back to this position. Now we want these little standoff pieces. And these will go into these slots. So we can glue them. Make sure you don't put any glue on this bottom edge because that will glue it to this gear underneath. We only want to glue it to this smaller gear. So put your glue on these little short edges that are protruding. Just blobs of glue in the corner.
Now I'll take this piece and again sand off any tabs. You could give the whole edge a little bit of a sand. This will be our cam, which will be rubbing to push our fish forward and backwards. So we also need to give that a wax. Wax that edge. And this will push on. So we can glue that. Let's remove it again. Glue. Inside the slot and over top of this disc. So we want to make sure we're gluing it to the disc and to the walls of the axle here, this cross piece. So put the glue up the walls and in this cross. Clean off the excess glue. We don't want that to get stuck to um, the piece that goes on top because this piece is moving. Wipe off excess glue. Now find this piece. Sand off any tabs. No glue on this piece, but it will slide into the slot. Now we want to find this piece. Sand off any tabs and give the point a wax. This point will be pulling on our strings later on. So we want that to be lubricated. And this will be slid down and onto our little standoff pieces. I won't push that right on because it might end up pulling off those standoffs that aren't quite dry yet, but we know where it's going to go, so let's take it off and put on some glue. We can put that in the corners of our standoffs. and lower that down and press it down firmly and we can set that aside for a while now we're going to make the jaw of the fish So we're going to glue on that face, glue on this face, and glue on this face.
So glue those together, we'll make sure they're properly aligned. And glue on this face because it will be going down like so. Press those down all firmly so the glue all squishes out. Clean away a bit of excess glue. Make sure that back edge is lined up. I'll just push it down on the table to do that. This is a good way to line them up. And we'll leave that aside to dry. Okay, let's take the body of our fish, sand off any tabs, And inside that hole, we'll have our our flipper axle inside there, so we can make that nice and smooth, and give it a wax as well. Now I'll take the tail, sand off any tabs. and take a 40 centimeter length of string and we're going to cut it in half so fold it in half and cut it down the middle we're going to tie a figure of eight not to allow a hinge for the tail to wiggle. So it's now going to come from underneath and it's going to go over down into the tail and then bring it back around so we're getting a sort of figure of eight Pull them up tightly and tie an overhand knot. And tie another overhand knot to secure it. Trim off the excess string. And do the same procedure for the bottom holes. There we are, we've got that figure of eight again. And tie the overhand knot. 
make sure you've got your tail up the right way so the longer uh, top of the fin is at the top. There's a wiggly tail. Let's chop off those excess bits of string. Can be a good idea to put a blob of glue on those knots just to make sure they don't come apart. some water on those to let it wick in to the string. Now we can put our fish body onto the stem. We'll slide on like so. Let's glue that. So put some glue in the slot. And in this slot. Just cleaning off any excess glue. Now you can test the mechanism by rotating the gear and the fish body should rock backwards and forwards. So that cam should be pushing it forwards and then gravity should pull it back to the rocked backed position. So just return it back to where we were, back at the dot with the gear to the left. Now we can add the head of our fish. We're going to use the longer rubber band to secure it while the glue dries. So it's going to be slipped on into the slot like this then you'll pull that rubber band give it a twist so it hooks underneath the top fin and you'll bring it back around over the top and that's how it will sit while the glue is drying so let's take that off and put some glue on glue in the slot Use plenty of glue here. Put that rubber band through the mouth of the fish. Pull the rubber band back and twist it so that it hooks underneath the fin. And bring it back round. And we don't want to glue the rubber band to the fin, to the head, so try and clean off this excess glue. Just Brought the rubber band up a bit higher so that we weren't going to get our rubber band glued to the head by mistake because we're going to take this rubber band off later on. It's only there to hold the head in place while the glue dries. Set that aside to let the glue dry for 30 minutes. Take the backboard, sand off any tabs. face around these holes. This is where our iris mechanism will be sliding so we want that to be nice and lubricated. So plenty of wax. Turn it over and wax the printed face as well around the holes. And you 
can wax inside these holes, inside these slots. so that the dowels running inside them move smoothly. Clear away any excess wax. Now we're going to take our 5.5 millimeter long dowels, turn over the backboard so the printed face is down, place some glue in each of the holes, Careful not to get too much glue around the face. We don't want to end up binding the iris mechanism. We just want to glue in these dowels. And push in those dowels. push them all the way down so they're nice and flush on the bottom. Make sure you get them in straight otherwise you won't be able to push them down. You might have to pull them out and do it a few times. Clean away any excess glue on the other side. Make sure they're all flush. Very important to wipe away glue here. You don't want this side to be sticky. Make sure they're all completely down so they hit the table underneath. and clean away excess glue on this side around the dowels. We don't want the, the petals of the iris mechanism to be glued to these dowels. They have to rotate on them. So clean away any excess glue with a brush and water and then wipe it away with your paper towel. Now find the two eye screws, screw them in from the front, from the printed side, turning clockwise, screw them all the way in, and leave them horizontal. you can retain them with some glue also. Uh, 
Okay, now we have these ring parts. Sand off any tabs. Wax one face. This is the face that we'll be rubbing against the backboard. So lots of wax. Make sure that you wipe off any glue on your table surface so you don't get it on your parts. Now we're going to get our dowels. So there are four 13.5mm dowels and one of them has a small hole in it. So make sure you find that one. So push that dowel with the hole into one of the holes and then locate the longer dowel that has the slot in it. Then going clockwise you're going to miss a hole and now put that slotted dowel to the next hole and put it in with the slot facing towards you. That slot will be a little notch for our rubber band to fit into later on. And then push the other dowels into the remaining three holes. Okay, we've got our positions correct. Double check that with the image and the instructions. Hole slot. And now we can glue those in place. Don't get too much glue around the dowel on this top face because that can cause the mechanism to bind. Keep that as clean as you can. Remember that the slot on this dowel should be facing towards you. Make sure you push them all the way in until they hit the table surface behind. Clean away any excess glue. And wipe it off. Check they're all flush on the back and make sure that you haven't filled in the hole in this dowel with glue just take your toothpick and clean that hole out if you have because you're going to have to feed a string through that hole later on so make sure it's all clear Now take your backboard and this ring we've prepared. Make sure your slotted dowel goes into this slot which is just to the right of the top. So here's the slotted dowel going into this slot. Push in all of your slots. All of, pushing all of the dowels into their slots. Check that rotates nicely. And your dowel with the hole will be down to the bottom left. Dowel with the slot to the top right. Take your five petals and give them a sand. 
sand off all the tabs. These tabs will stop the petals from sliding into each other nicely. So make sure that these edges are nice and smooth. Just check the petals that these holes are reasonably loose on the dowels. They need to turn nice and freely. If they are tight you can roll a, the sandpaper into a little tube and sand them a bit looser. They're all pretty good. I might just give them a little bit of a sand to be extra sure. Roll that sandpaper into a tight tube. And twist that around in your holes. So you can give that hole and that slot a bit of a sand. If you found they were tight in the hole and the slot, then keep sanding until they're nice and free so the, me so the mechanism doesn't have too much force required to turn it. Make sure you wax both faces of the petals and the edges and the slot and the hole so everything gets a good wax. This mechanism can move quite nicely but it needs to be nice and lubricated and free in order to move easily. Because of these eye screws, you won't be able to put this down flat on the table, so you, you might want to move it to the edge of the table to do this next step. So bring it to the edge of the table and set those eye screws just off the edge. Now you can lay it flat. And now we can start to put on our petals, so no glue here. So. One dowel will go through the hole, the other will go through the slot. Now just lift that up holding this bottom ring. Give that a twist to make sure that's all moving nicely. Put that back on the edge of the table. Take our other ring, 
make sure there's no tabs that need sanding. And we're going to be placing that on top, but first we want to wax the face which will be in contact, so the downwards face. Right, so I, I find this easier not to glue just yet, and that allows me to not bind up and get glue where I don't want it. So we can push that on without glue. Start by pushing on the longer dowel with the slot in it. And then work on your other dowels. And you don't want to push this on so far that it squeezes the mechanism. So push that on, but allow for a bit of a gap. So I haven't left quite enough gap, so I'm going to just put in a pair of scissors and pry it back a bit, moving that ring away a bit so that I can get a bit more of a gap and not pinch my petals quite so much. helps the mechanism to move nice and freely. Instead of allowing for half a millimetre to a millimetre gap in between. It's easiest if you can test it by holding the edges. Don't squeeze it, but just put some pressure on those outside edges of the ring and rotate it. And that looks nice. That feels nice. So check that that's moving nice and freely and adjust that spacing until you have it moving nice and freely or sand any areas of the petals that you think might be catching. And when you've got that moving nice and freely then you can secure it with a bit of glue. So I just place the glue around the dowels and then apply a bit of water afterwards to let them wick in and that should be enough to hold them in place. Again, be careful not to fill up your little hole in this dowel with glue because you need to push a piece of string through that hole. Now we can find the sides of our hopper, sand off any tabs, and 
and those will fit in on the unprinted side. So apply some glue on the outside of this edge, just on the face, and on these two little edges. And make sure it's flush on this front face. And on the outside of that edge. And these short edges. It's flush in the front and just push out to make a good contact. And then take the back board of the hopper that will be glued in position While the glue is drying on the hopper, we can come back to our fish. So remove that rubber band that was securing our fish head. And now that head should stay in place on its own. Find the flipper axle, and that will be just loosely placed in the hole for now. Now take one 40 centimeter length of string, feed it through the right hole. You might like to use a toothpick to help you fish the uh, string out. Pull that through until you leave about 10 centimeters staying up the other side. And take another 40 centimeter length of string and do the same on the left hole. Fish it out with a toothpick and leave 10 centimeters protruding. Make sure that your fish is in this position at the dot on the outside gear with your handle pointing to the left. Bring your right string and bring it under the flipper axle. over the top and then through the slot. Keeping that length here for tying. And then continue bringing it 
and de-clockwise over the flipper axle and then through the hole in the tail. rotate this round and do the left string. The left string is going to go under the flipper axle, over and through the slot, but now rather than bringing it back towards the tail we're going to bring it forward and back under the flipper axle and through the same hole in the tail. You might like to use a toothpick to help you push that through. Adjust those strings so that your slots are more or less pointing down at a 45 degree angle and we'll put in the flippers to secure those strings. Don't tie any knots yet. Sand any tabs off the flippers. some glue on those side faces and leave the glue on those flippers to dry for 30 minutes. Now take your smaller rubber band and you're going to hook that into this little hook on the hopper. Pull it up into that slot on that pin, on that dowel. Just check that rubber band isn't pulling the hopper sides out of alignment. Take your 40 centimeter length of string. You're going to tie a double overhand knot, so through once, through twice, and give that a pull. Don't shorten your string too much, so make sure your knots down the end of the string. Now we're going to feed that string through the hole in this dowel. Pull it through. Make sure your knot doesn't come through. On the other side, you're going to feed it down through the center of these eye screws. Then you're going to run the string through the right hole. And pull it through. Now we're going to tie the string off on the other hook on the hopper side. So 
form a loop and then run your string through that loop. Now we want this string to have enough tension so that it's holding the iris slightly open. So open that iris up a little bit by rotating it clockwise and then pull that string and that knot tight. So when you release it, the iris should be a little bit open. Probably would like it a bit more open than that, so I'll open it up a bit more. I'll loosen that knot again. Just using a toothpick to help me do that. Open it up quite a bit and then tighten the knot. Then let it release. And you can pull it down a little bit, close it up a little bit. Okay, that's probably a good position. I'll secure that with another knot, so loop back through the hook on our hopper sides and put the string through that loop. I'm not going to cut that string for now, we might find we want to adjust that a little bit later on. But it should be sitting so the iris is just slightly open. And then when our fish comes past, he'll push on the string, causing the iris to open as he puts his head through. Once the glue's dry on our flippers, then we can take our rubber band, We're going to put it over the right flipper, stretch it around, the top of the rubber band will go through the mouth, the bottom of the rubber band will go under the chin, and then hook the other side around his left flipper. Now take your jaw that you prepared earlier and using your toothpick you can hook that rubber band out slightly and push the stalk of the jaw down and behind it and the top of the jaw and behind the band that's running through his mouth. So it looks like this. You can hinge. So now we can start tying some knots. So you want to pull these strings enough so that the flippers get pulled back 45 degrees. So put the fish in the position shown so that he's at the little dot on the left and the handle is to the left the male puzzle pieces to the right and then pull these strings until the flippers start moving back I'm going to keep pulling them until they come back about 45 degrees like this And when they're in that position, you can tie an overhand knot. Just keeping the tension to stop the flippers coming forward. And then make sure the flippers are still at 45 degrees tie another knot to secure it. Don't trim these yet because we want to make sure everything's just right before we trim our strings. So the flippers are still at 45 degrees. So we're going to check the motion. As we wind forward the flippers should come forward. So what's happening is that the cam is pushing our, our fish forward 
and it's causing these strings to tension and they're unwinding off of the off of the flipper axle and making them come back so he flaps his flippers and as we wind him around the cam will push him forward rocking him forward and pulling the flippers back so just check that motion just make sure your strings aren't getting tangled in the gear teeth don't worry about the tail motion just yet we'll fine tune that later but make sure the flippers are doing the right thing and if not, you will need to adjust this knot, the tension on these strings. That looks good. <clears throat> so I put him back to this position. So now, while the fish is in this rocked forward position, with his flippers pulled back at 45 degrees, we also want his tail to be flipped to the right about 30 degrees. So we're going to pull these strings slightly so the tail is central but then push it slightly to the right so pull the string through a bit until the tail is being pulled to the right and now we'll tie a knot over and under now we want to make sure this tail wiggles symmetrically so wind the handle again and now it's flipping to the left gets pulled to the right so that looks reasonably symmetrical. Perhaps it's a little too much to his left, so we might put him back to our starting position, untie that knot and move the tail a little bit more to the right so that it's a bit more symmetrical in its wiggle. So just loosen that knot. Pull the tail, pull that string coming up the left side of his tail a bit tighter so that his tail is a bit further to his right. Make sure both those strings are tight, so pull those and over and under once again and check the motion. Okay, that's not correct. Now it's too far, so put him back to our dot. Loosen the tail knot again. Bring it back more towards the center. Important that he's in his rocked forward position here at the dot. So the tail was too much flipping to the right, so we're going to move it a bit to the left before we retie the knot. And check it again. That looks better. So when you're happy with that tail motion, then tie another knot to secure it. So now we can cut our strings. We're happy with all the motions. And I might also put a blob of glue on those knots just to secure them. And if you want to, you can sketch on some eyes using an ink pen. Now we can glue on our mechanical iris backboard.
we want to leave that backboard at least 30 minutes to dry before we run our fish into it. But we can continue for now. We can glue on our little fish. So find your little fish. Sand off any tabs. Put some glue, not on the very bottom, because we don't want to glue it to the piece of wood underneath this moving gear, but just to the little corners. And around the sides. Give that a bit of a wiggle to make sure we're not gluing the bottom of that piece to the board underneath. Set that aside to dry for 30 minutes. In the meantime, we can continue with our drawer. So find the drawer parts, sand off any tabs. And we want these tabs to be towards us, this large tab away from us, and these slots angling inwards. Okay, let's put some glue on those. and leave that to dry for 30 minutes. So when the glue's dry, we can put our drawer into the base and turn the handle to check how the iris mechanism works. So make sure he's pushing the iris open and it snaps back shut. If you're not happy with that iris motion, you can adjust this knot at the back, undo it, pull the string a bit tighter to make this iris slightly more open in its relaxed position and retie the knot. Take some of this um, foam and measure out a one centimeter by one centimeter square. And this will give the bird, uh, this will give the fish a tongue. And push that into his mouth. Peel off the sticky backing and then push it into his mouth. Now take your 12mm diameter ball 
and put that into the fish's mouth. And check that it rolls down into the iris hopper and down the slope and you should see it appear in one of the holes in the drawer. And you can open the drawer and read your answer to your fortune. If the ball is getting stuck in the hole at the back, then take a bit of sandpaper over a steel ruler and sand a bit of a chamfer on the backboard and that should hopefully provide enough clearance for the ball to run through the slot. So when you're happy with the motion, you can trim the string and ask your fish a question. Are you a fish? And see what he says. No, he's not a fish. Congratulations, that's all finished. And make sure when you're winding that you put your thumb and index finger like so. Uh, and that means you don't have to push down on the board, which can cause this gear to not run as smoothly. It can pinch it. It's best to hold it like this. Well done. Thanks for making our gearbox pets. All of the different animal kits in the Gearbox Pet series can join together. That way you can make them move all together. So I like to do this by putting them at evenly spaced intervals around their circular path. So I have the tortoise on the left and I have him in the top left corner. I have the, f the bird in the middle uh, at the bottom and the fish on the right to the right top corner. And here's how you join them up. So first you want to mesh this small gear in with the large gear teeth in the pet to the right. And at the same time you want to interlace these two pieces with these two pieces. So the top piece is going in between. So mesh the gears and then interlace you might need to rotate this a little bit to get the gear teeth lined up. And there we go, so the gear teeth are lined up and our and our parts are interlaced at the back. That allows you to slide it right in and let it drop down. And we can do the same. So mesh those gear teeth interlace the pieces at the back, slide them in and let them drop down and now they'll all move together as one unit.